Hey everybody, this is John Wood again, and I want to do for you a video today on a little fly called the E.P. Tarantula Crab. Now this is a pattern by Enrico Puglisi. I uh, recently got a, a request to do a bunch of these things, and I wanted to show you some of the tricks that I have learned over the last few years of using his brushes to um, to create these flies just a couple little things that make them a little easier to handle and it took a while for me to figure some of these things out um, I want to run through the materials though real quick before we get started this is the hook is an umqua XS 415 and this has got a short shank it's shorter than the XS 420 which I, I like for the shrimp pattern. It just doesn't have the same length. It gives you a good shape on the crab. I'm going to use two different threads. Instead of using a mono the way uh, Mr. Puglisi does, I'm going to use a, a thread on the back end that matches the color of the body of the crab. Uh, that one there in the opening was a tan. I'm going to do all of them black. But in the back of the fly, we're going to use the olive thread, and then for the front, we're going to use chartreuse. Both of those in six aught. Um, hot spot near the eyes and claws of the crab is a woolly critter brush, or you can use the uh, streamer brush. You want that in a half inch, hot orange. Uh, for flash, we're going to use black crystal flash. For the legs, these are shrimpy crabby legs. This is uh, again a difference in the way uh, Enrico Puglisi ties his flies. I like the speckled orange tip legs for these as opposed to the barred legs. The body will be uh, a one inch tarantula hairy brush and this is black olive. It's, uh, it's a really cool color makes a good looking fly for the eyes um, I am using eyes that I have made using UV resin and colored UV resin for instructions on how to do that see the shrimp crab eyes video here on my YouTube channel Jay Wood Fly Fishing and for the claws again I made a video on how to make these these are made using ultra chenille and they're really easy to make and these are what we're going to use on this crab today let's get started i'm going to start by doing a under layer of thread over the entire hook using this olive and again, I want the olive in the back because if you use the chartreuse in the back, we're not putting as many wraps of uh, brush on there. And the chartreuse really kind of shines through just a bit too much. So I'm going to bring that down onto the hook bend ways and then create just a little thread bump. And this is one of the little tricks I wanted to tell you about that I have learned from using these brushes over time. I build that little bump and then take my thread and go right back behind it. Let the thread hang and I've got a piece of this um, woolly critter or streamer brush, whichever one you want to use, already cut off and that's where I cut it from the last fly. I'm just going to strip off the fibers from a small section of that. I'm going to kind of brush those back and catch it in right behind that bump. And now this bump allows me to really lock this brush wire in, make two wraps there, and then swing it towards the front of the bump and then wrap it down. And that wire going over that bump really locks it down. Now when you get to where the end of your wire is, release the pressure of your wraps a little bit and you have a much less likely chance of cutting your thread. And I'm going to wrap back to where we tied it in, brushing all those fibers back 
and then again loop my thread back behind the bump make another wrap and then I'm going to loop my thread back up here onto the shank of the hook and the reason I did that is because as I wrap this brush around there I want to stroke those fibers back away or all the way back and that keeps me from catching my thread when I'm stroking those fibers back. And I'm going to make two wraps with that and then as I come around on the second one I'm going to undo that loop wrap with the thread and my thread is exactly where I want it to catch that wire very securely. I'm just going to make one wrap strip everything back and then right in front of that make a few wraps go forward just a little ways and then I'm going to not use my my good sharp scissors I'm going to use these loon heavy duty uh, uh, I'm not sure don't remember what they're called but these things are super heavy duty they are excellent for cutting wire and I like cutting wire with scissors better than using say like a cutter like this because it tends to leave less of a burr and you don't break your thread as much. Don't cut it on the wire. So I've got almost all of those fibers stripped out of that wire and I'm just going to lay it down right there. Catch it with my thread. Wrap to the end and then loose wraps over the end so I don't cut my thread. And then tight wraps back to where we caught that. Then I'm going to stroke everything back real good and then kind of build just a slight thread dam up on that so it pushes all of those fibers back. And that's going to be the hot spot on the back of the fly. Now I've got one strand of black crystal flash cut here. I'm going to double it over. The ends don't have to be perfectly even because we're not really concerned with getting those real even. And then I'm just going to cut it in half. Now I'm going to just take it and loop it under the thread. Check and see that it's somewhat even. Again, doesn't have to be perfectly even. Put pressure on my thread, thread pull those strands of crystal flash back and then bind them back to where we built that little thread dam. I'll bring that right back up to where that drops off. And I'm building a taper here for a specific reason. Um, and it has to do with how the brush goes on the fly. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Now I'm going to take my legs, which come in this little pieces here, and I'm going to cut two strands and I want to keep them together on the ends because it makes it just a little easier to handle. Now well, that one broke. Let's try that again. Uh, it's just easier to handle the ends of these things and get them on there evenly when you have both ends connected. So again I'm just going to get it onto the thread. Oh, there we go. Kind of getting away from me there. Even up these two ends that are connected. And grab them. Pull them up on the thread. Pull down on the thread. Get them right up on top of the hook shank. Give them a good stretch. You don't have to stretch them all the way. But make sure they're stretched fairly good. And then just bind it down. Again back to the same point we bound the original brush and the crystal flash and then just kind of cover that up real good I'm going to build a little bit of a transition between that rubber and the hook shank now to keep these legs out of the way I like to get them contained because it helps with tying the fly I'm going to even the ends back up and cut them right where they are now independent I just cut that binder off the end. Now I'm going to take these legs and lock them into my material holder. If I can get that to do it. There we go. Slide that back and those are going to be out of my way 
until I'm ready to release them right at the end of the flight. Now I'm going to take one of these brushes and what I've found is in tying these flies for this 10 inch brush I can get exactly and I mean exactly two of these crabs out of each brush and I find it a little easier to handle and um, there's a lot less rough roughing up of the brush if I just cut this in half. So I fold it in in half, I'm going to take my scissors and nip it, and now I've got about five inches of brush. I'm just going to pull some of those fibers right out the end, a little over an eighth of an inch, and pinch that between my thumb and forefinger, thumbnail and forefinger, and just brush it back. I'm going to catch that to where I want to have the fiber start about an eighth of an inch in front of where I had everything tied off. Oh, let's try that again. There we go. And then bind that down because I want those fibers to be right there nice and thick next to that hot spot. Now I'm going to bind right up to the end of the wire. Make sure I get both pieces of it. Bind that in there real good and then create a nice nice smooth transition. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want a drop because I don't want my brush to fall in a location where I don't want. I want to be able to control where that brush wraps whenever I wrap it around there. Now I'm going to take my olive thread right up to right behind the eye of the hook and then reposition the hook in the vise. Excuse me while I rotate that a little bit so I can get it exactly where I want it. And I want that on the highest point of the hook bend before the point. Now I'm going to switch threads and rather than whip finish that off I'm just going to pick up my chartreuse and wrap it over the olive. Now the olive is secured and the chartreuse is started without having to stop and do a whip finish. And I'm just going to lay another layer of thread in here right up to where I'm going to set the eyes in a minute. And when you let your thread hang, if your hook shank is level, then I want that to be a little bit forward of halfway between the point and the barb. And that's it right there. Now I'm just going to take my thread back. And that gives me a marker of where my eyes and uh, after that the claws will go. And I'm just going to, for the dumbbell eyes, make several layers back and forth and make that shank a little bit thicker so it grabs the eyes better. Now these eyes, which I forgot to mention in the materials in the beginning, are 4.5 millimeter silver or chrome. And I'm just going to lock them down where the edge of the eye the dumbbell eye is even with the back of the eye of the hook and you can kind of walk those back and forth by rotating them and rocking them on top of the hook shank. Get it where you want and then just make 45 degree wraps one way and then the other way. Do any straightening that you need to do as you're building these. I want to make sure they're nice and level for one thing and I want to make sure that they're not crooked, they're actually perpendicular to the shank of the hook. Now if you've made your 45s both ways, several wrap between the dumbbell eyes and the hook shank several times. Make those wraps pretty tight, just about to the maximum of your thread. Do a few more 45s and then between the dumbbell and the shank again. And those eyes should be locked in to where they are not going to move. And then bring your thread back to where we made the transition between the two colors. Now for the eyes on this olive, 
Uh, Enrico recommends using these, his orange eyes. Now these are the uh, fluorescent burnt orange that I made in the video, which you can see on my channel. And I'm going to measure them so that they are, the end of the eyes is right at the back of the hook bend. And I'm going to have to rotate this where the mono uh, stem intersects. I want it to be right there at that transition. I'm going to have to rotate this to where I can see it so I can get them where I want and use both hands. I put my left finger up against the back of the hook. Push it, ah, if I can get those to cooperate, there we go. Push it down against the vise, and then put my right thumbnail right where I want the bend to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little pliers here, these are some little jeweler's pliers, and crimp that right where I marked it. And then I'm gonna crimp it several more times further down on the pliers where the jaws are wider and create a flat spot in the mono. Then we're going to take that right where we crimped it first, right out towards the end of these pliers where the jaws are really skinny, and bend that. Bend those up. And I'm creating the bend that is going to set those eyes at the angle that we want them. And then right back here, right back at the end of where we finish crimping it. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to save those for my next set of eyes that I build out of that piece of mono. Now one more time I'm going to come here right at the very end of that crimp and bend that really good on both of those eyes one at a time. There we go. Now you can see that's a bend. So this mono right here on this, what we're going to call the foot on the stem of the eye, is nice and flat. So it's going to sit on the hook shank. And we're going to tie it in right at where that bend is. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hold that in there and position that to where when I pull that thread down, it's going to fall right at that bend. Then I'm going to wrap back in wide wraps a couple of times and lock that to the shank of the hook. Now I'm just going to repeat that process over here. Now on this one, uh, because the first eye is already on top of the shank of the hook, it's going to cause this foot to rotate towards me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here with my pliers and I'm going to bend that eye back towards the fly away from me and that's going to help me to get this so it will sit exactly where I want it to sit. Again I'm going to catch that thread right in that first crimp, make sure my eye is the length that I want it and then just start wrapping. And Now what that has done has locked those eyes down. They're not going to rotate on the shank and because we had several crimps and that's not a smooth surface, they cannot be pulled out from under that thread. There is no need to glue those eyes down. Uh, I'm not a fan of putting glue on flies, uh, super glue on flies, if I can at all avoid it. And especially in this case, because of the way you're wrapping when we get there, I don't want super glue on there gluing my fingers to the fly itself. So now we've got our claws, and this is where we're going to set them. Just a little bit forward of where we tied in the foot of the eye stem. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'm going to take those, even up the knots, which is the joints, and then I'm going to measure from the front end of that joint, or I'm sorry, from the back end of that joint on this uh, size one, one half inch on my little scale that I've got here on my vise, and then cut that right there. Now if you want to save these things, burn the ends of them, 
and you've got your uh, body for San Juan worms all ready cut and ready to go. I just throw them back in the same bag that I store my claws in and I'll have them there whenever I want to use them. Okay, so I'm going to set this so that the claw is turned inward when it's done. Let's see if I can do this here. I know you probably can't see that uh, very well. I couldn't see it very well either. There we go. There we go. That's where I want that claw set. And I'm going to bend this back so you can see where it's at. There's just, on, on this side, if you can see it, there's just a slight gap between where the eyes were tied in. Maybe you can see it right there. Slight gap between where the eyes are tied in and where the claw is tied in. Now I'm going to repeat this process on my side of the hook. Uh, again, I'm not grabbing very much, maybe an eighth of an inch. Get it positioned to where it's right on the side of the hook shank. And then bind the heck out of it. Again, you don't need to glue these. I know that a lot of people do. But if you just bind the heck out of this, I guarantee you the rest of the fly is going to fall apart before those claws come out. Even if a fish grabs it by the claw and you pull the, you're able to pull the fly out of the fish's mouth and he's just got that claw, it's not coming out. These are bound very tight. And that's one of the reasons I like to use the 6 aught thread as opposed to like a size B or a 3 aught because you'll build up too much bulk getting the number of wraps that you want on there. And the smaller diameter of this thread cuts in to that chenille a little bit better. Now here I'm building a nice slow taper so I don't have an abrupt step right here at the end of where the foot of the eye stem was. That'll keep from having the uh, brush jump off the edge of it if you get too close of it when we get there. Now I'm going to bring the thread up between the dumbbells and the hook eye and just bring those claws forward and make a couple of quick loose wraps. And that's just to hold those in place temporarily. Now we're going to take our brush. I'm grabbing it in my hand with my pinky and my third finger. And then using my thumb and forefinger to brush the fibers back. Then I'm going to bring that around. I'm pulling the eye back out of the way using my scissors. And then I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And I want to try to make sure that I don't wrap over this hot spot and bury it under the black and olive brush. And I'm just going to do that again. We're only going to make four wraps back here. So this is two. Get that out of the way. There we go. It, it, you. You do wrestle with those a little bit from time to time. It's not the easiest process, but practice and, and you'll get it. It's not that tough to do. Again, I'm putting my scissors between the hook shank and the eye, bringing that brush through there, and then doing the same thing on the other side. Now, I kind of pulled that and slid it forward a little bit. On my fourth wrap, I want this brush to be right up under where the eyes were tied to the hook shank. And if I don't know if you can see that very well, but that positions those eyes exactly where they need to be. Now, we're going to be brushing out the fibers on this perpendicular to the shank of the hook at the end just before we trim it. So I'm going to take my bodkin at this point and go ahead and just kind of free all of those fibers that got spun around the hook shank so that I don't have to 
fight them so much later on. That's just going to save me a lot of time. Now I'm going to brush all the fibers back using my thumb and forefinger on top of the hook and my middle finger on the bottom of the hook and wrap between the eyes and the claws. Break those loose like we did behind the eyes and then we're good to go there. Okay now I have put my brush wire in this is a pair of hackle pliers by Tie Flies Tools and I really love it for this process. It helps handling the brush makes it a lot easier. Um, I have found that when you're handling these brushes I tend to get a little bit gorilla and pull on these fibers and trying to get it snug around the hook shank and what happens is these fibers will slide up and down in this twisted wire and you'll end up with a bare spot and then a, a spot that's super dense and it makes the body of your fly very uneven in density and that's not something that we want so I've got these in that hackle plier on that wire and that's going to help me wrap this now that I've got that wrap between the claws and the eyes, I'm going to unwrap the claws and then I'm going to come behind the claw on my side of the hook, make sure it stays in position and then do the same thing on the other side of the hook, making sure that claw stays in position. Now all I've got to do as I wrap around, take my thumb and forefinger on top my middle finger on the bottom and just pull those fibers around. Make that loop, groom it again. And these, uh, this brush tries to rotate on you as you go around because of the twist in the wire. So just do the best you can with that. And the, the fewer fibers you get bound under the wire as you wrap the fuller your body's going to be when you finish out this fly and like i said this half brush is exactly what i need to tie each one of these crabs be careful of that hook point i just jabbed myself pretty good just keep going until you run out of brush. I've got one more right there. Now I'm going to come around and I've got just bare wire right there. I'm going to make sure I've got all my fibers groomed back. Give it a couple of not too tight wraps. Pull on that wire real good and then pull on your bobbin and you've got that thing locked down really good now i'm going to give it a couple more really tight wraps lift the wire give it a couple under and a couple over i want to make sure i've got a slight gap between the dumbbell eyes and the fibers right here because we're going to crisscross wrap over that wire to secure it even further I'm going to take my little loon scissors right here, clip that wire right behind the eye of the hook. Make sure I've got all those fibers out of the way. Loop it over, crisscross it once each way, and then I'm going to come in here and wrap over the end of the wire so that is secured in there very well. Now I'm going to just cover that wire with crisscross wraps several on one side and then several on the other and this puppy is bound down and it is never going to come loose and I just make some more wraps there right behind the hook eye whip finish that off and that thing is super -de duper -de secure is not going to come loose. Now before we trim this I want to groom everything. I'm going to start with my bodkin 
and get right down along the shank of the hook and pick out the fibers that might be caught along the shank of the hook from spinning them around. If you handle that really good, like I was showing you with the thumb and forefinger on top and the second finger underneath, you will get those groomed back and not catch too many fibers. Now I'm going to use my uh, eyebrow mustache brush comb. You can get this at any uh, drugstore, Walmart, any of those places. Um, it's fairly inexpensive, about five or six bucks, but it's worth its weight in gold if you're working with fibers at all. Now I've got everything groomed out perpendicular to the hook shank. We're going to flatten this on top and bottom. I'm going to start on the top, and the thing I don't want to do is get right down on the hook shank and the wires that hold that brush together. I want to have a little bit of space in there so that we're not exposing the wire in the middle and we're not exposing that chartreuse thread. Now you really can't tell, but I'm not opening up my scissors much, just about that much and working my way back. I don't want to open them up and cut fibers from way out here. I just want to cut right in the center. So I'm going to do that. Then turn that upside down and knock all those fibers loose. Then I'm going to do the same thing on what will be the bottom of the fly. Again, not opening my scissors up very much. Just cutting right Let's see, if I can clean that, you can see what's going on there, just right in the center. There we go. Now I'm going to just come right across the top and trim those. And I'm trimming closer to the shank towards the dumbbell eyes because I want those to sit closer to the bottom when that fly is at rest. And then back here where the claws and the mono eyes are there the fibers are a little bit thicker and that's going to stand taller that's going to give a kind of a, a a suggestion of a defensive pose for the crab i'm going to do the same thing on top because i've cut the center out just going to flatten this down and i'm not looking for I don't want it flat as a pancake. It's still going to have some thickness to it. Especially right now before we trim the shape. Now you could, if you wanted to, fish that fly just like that. And it would do just fine. The only thing is it won't sink as fast because you've got a little bit more bulk. So I'm going to continue to trim. I'm going underneath. I want to get these even from side to side. And I hope you can tell what I'm doing here. And just get that so that it's a suggestion of flatness there. And we may have to trim around the eyes a little bit when I take it out of the vise, but I can generally get it pretty darn good from here. Now, I'm going to trim the shape, and I'm not going to cut it like along that edge. Instead, I'm going to come in and nip at it. And it's much easier for me to see the shape when I can look down on it, so I'm going to do that. But I'm just coming in at the angle that I showed you, and just nip, 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 nip. And I'm going all the way up to... right underneath the eyes and then we're going to leave the mouth parts i'm going to leave those fibers a little bit long right here and you can see the difference between the two sides i'm going to do the same thing on this one and this is not a fly that you want to be crisp and clean on the edges you want it to be scruffy and rough so 
cutting in at an angle like this, like I said, I'm coming in and cutting at an angle like that. I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm not actually cutting while I'm telling you that. Um, will keep you from having a, a, a really hard, super clean edge on this fly. Now you can see what I'm looking for there. I'm going to trim just a little bit more here around the eyes. There we go. Keep flicking it like that and that'll get that those loose fibers off. And I'm going to do, I'm going to use my favorite fiber tool. Let me cover up my microphone while I do this. That'll suck all those loose fibers off of there. And I can see what I've got. Now before I pull it out of the vise, I'm going to put a little Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails over the thread wraps. I'm going to do it on top and on bottom. And I want a nice generous dab of that all over those threads just to protect them because on this fly this is the most vulnerable part of that fly. And I got that in the eye of the hook so I'm just going to take my bodkin and clean it out before I get the fly out of the vise. Now I just release those legs from my material holder. Let me get my hemostats. There we go. And that is the EP tarantula crab. Maybe not exactly the way Enrico Puglisi does it, but it's a pretty good representation. This fly has caught a lot of saltwater fish, uh, permit redfish, uh, bonefish, just about everything. And you can see that hot spot and those eyes. Those eyes are a little bit hidden, so I'm just going to nip, nip a little bit. There we go and bend those up just a hair. I don't think I got them quite even, but I doubt a fish is going to swim up to that and say, ooh, that crab is cross-eyed. I don't want to eat it. Um, there are enough triggers on this fly that just about any saltwater fish that eats crabs will eat that fly. So there you have it, the EP tarantula crab. So until next time, tie a few of these up, catch you some fish, and peace. Love and fly fishing, my friend.